Good morning, everybody. We're going to give it just a few moments for everybody to get logged in. I'm going to bring up all of our stuff we're doing today. Good morning, good morning to those just joining us. I'm going to go ahead and throw the link. Jaden, keep it plugged in. I'm going to throw the link into the chat. So go ahead and get yourselves logged into Nearpod. Oh my, my little bit moji, I guess she decided to cover up my writing on her walk of fame. So everybody should be getting logged in to the Nearpod. I'm going to throw it in the chat one more time here for those of you that just joined us. So celebrities as heroes is going to be our lessons for this week. So we're going to look at different celebrities and determine are they what we should consider a hero or are they not? Our reading for this week is also a good example of argumentative um, writing because it has the, a person that wrote, yes, they should be heroes and a person that wrote that, no, they shouldn't be heroes. So these are great mentor examples of what you guys are going to be writing starting next week. So our expectations are to stay focused, make class fun by having those class discussions, whether you're using the chat or unmuting yourself. Make sure to finish your work on time and use class time wisely. I did go in and start updating your grades. The only thing not graded is your notes for your paper and also um, your annotations for the Rosa Parks story. I have not graded either of those just yet because I wanted to give enough time um, for you guys to get those in and get them completed. And as you know, the notes are going to be kind of ongoing until you guys start your paper next week. So um, that's not going to get a grade until probably sometime next week. But a lot of people are missing work. So I have about 30 people that have done everything. They have all their assignments turned in, everything's done. And then the rest of you have either not done the assignments or you click turn it in and you don't attach it or you turn in something blank or um, you started it and then you just never went in and finished it. So um, if you have a zero or a really low grade on something, that is why. So our standard this week, we're working on RI8. So informative text is what we're reading. So informative gives us information. Um, and RI8 is trace and evaluate the argument and specific claims in a text, distinguishing claims that are supported by reason and evidence from claims that are not. So we're looking at ev evidence and argumentative essays again. So if you remember, we did one back um, around Christmas time, and now we are doing it again to close out the end of the year. So make sure you're taking notes each day on what we're talking about because they're going to be what help you do that paper. You only have next week to write the paper. 
I will not extend the time. So we'll do our mini lessons again, just a review of thesis and the body paragraphs and topic sentences and argumentative claims will be this week, but all the other ones will do mini lessons next week. And then the rest of the class, you're using that time wisely to do your writing, build your outline, do your rough draft, and then finally turn in your final draft for grading. So we are literally down to the end. So our objective is I can make a claim and find evidence to clearly support my claim. So we're going to do a little kind of review bell work here. So in your own words, what is a thesis statement? So you will have two minutes to write it in your own words. What is a thesis statement? I'm loving some of these answers. These are looking great. About 30 more seconds. All right, great participation, guys. Um, so remember, a thesis statement is going to be what your claim to the overall paper is. So whatever your topic is, so your topic question, you have to make the claim to answer that question. So you're stating your opinion, but in argumentative essays, you're stating your opinion based on evidence that you've read or found. So your thesis falls into that introduction paragraph and is normally the last sentence. So just remember, it is your claim to the entire paper, what you are going to prove. So moving on, celebrities and influencers. Who is a celebrity or influencer you look up to and why? So we're going to use this as a collaboration. So someone that you look up to and why do you look up to them? It could be a current day celebrity. It could be a past celebrity. It could be somebody that's just an influencer. It could be an athlete. So tell me, who is someone that you look up to and why? Go ahead, Anna. My screen still shows, um, like, it still sh shows nothing. It just shows celebrities and influence, but it doesn't show, like, the box to type. Okay. Um, what I would do is exit out of the Nearpod and try to get back in. If it makes you change your name, just add a last initial.
So celebrity or influencer to be an athlete. Why do you look up to them? Okay, so we got the Jenner sisters, Kylie and Kendall. Sorry, I had to refresh my screen. Okay, so an anime character. So ultimately, you could even look up to the writer of these so it's like there's somebody behind those characters whether you know it's somebody you see on tv there's a producer there's a director there's people that write about these characters and create these um images that you see and so maybe the person that's the writer of this character who evolves this character can be somebody that you could consider a hero Good one. So everybody should be put, put in somebody. I've only got two up here. Okay, so BTS, because we like their songs. Who else? Who else we got? I give it about one minute left. I don't, like I said, I only see three. Okay, so we have an artist that talks about real issues. Another artist, which will be good because we are actually going, not today, but tomorrow we'll be talking about Nipsey Hussle. So I like that we're bringing in the, the musicians. I'm gonna go with Billy, we're talking Billy Ellis. It's just an assumption. Okay, so we got Messi based on his ability, his athletic ability. All right, so we're going to move on here. We're going to do the first read of celebrities as heroes. So remember, I said this is an argumentative essay. So we have one person that says, nope, celebrities are not heroes, should not even be looked at as heroes. And then we have the opinion of celebrities should be looked at as heroes. I want you to pay close attention to the style and how they're talking. Notice that it's not just 
I think this, I think that, um, maybe this, maybe that, like, they're very firm in what they're saying. And, um, notice how they provide evidence. So they use the evidence to back up what they're saying. So we're going to watch the intro video and then we're going to listen to the first read of both of the essays. A red carpet premiere. Rows of fans line up to see their favorite stars. Lights, cameras, fame. What is it about celebrities that captivates us? A sold out concert, a cheering crowd, row after row of autograph seekers. There's no doubt celebrities impact our society. Whether we like it or not, we all know their names. But does society idolize celebrities too much? Can we consider celebrities to be heroes? Or is there harm in holding them in such high regard? Find out. Read celebrities as heroes and decide for yourself. Okay, so this is where we're going to have our point, our point being made, and our counterpoint. So the person that comes in and makes their claim, and then the person that debates their claim. Point. Celebrities should not be idolized as heroes. Did you read what he said on Twitter? He's my hero. Do you know what she did on vacation? She's my hero. Did you hear how they finally tracked down the gang in the latest podcast? They're my heroes. Did you see what she wore to that award show? She's my hero. Okay, so really quick, I just want to pause this because I want you to notice how this person used these comments that people tend to make about celebrities. And she used it, or he, whoever it is, used it as their hook to grab you in. It's like, okay, what's this person about to talk about? So I just want to point that out, that that's a really interesting hook that they just used. Today, many people use the word hero too lightly. They confuse the word hero with the word celebrity. Right now, almost anyone can be a celebrity just because his or her name or face can be recognized. But money notoriety, and flamboyant behavior don't make someone a hero. Neither does playing the role of a hero on TV or in the movies. In fact, most celebrities don't deserve to be called heroes because they aren't heroes. They're people who are celebrities or celebrated for no other reason than because their fame has spread by word of mouth, the press, or social media. What makes a hero? Heroes have been defined as people who have demonstrated admirable qualities such as strength, honesty, courage and perseverance, sometimes at great risk to themselves. They have accomplished something that helped others in some way. For example, by refusing to give up her seat on a bus, Rosa Parks became a hero for civil rights. Her actions inspired others to fight for equality in peaceful ways. Firefighters, police officers, soldiers, and regular citizens have often acted heroically when they've saved people from attacks and natural disasters. Heroes can also be individuals who have made a difference in people's lives, such as teachers, parents, coaches, and mentors. When celebrities are idolized just because they play heroes in movies and on television, or are famous for dangerous or inappropriate publicity stunts, they end up overshadowing real heroes. They may get our attention, but they certainly don't do much to positively change the world. This leaves young people with poor role models and heroes with little substance. Psychologist Abby Aronowitz, PhD, says that the media is partly to blame for the hero worship of celebrities. She says that the media devotes a lot of attention to celebrities and little time to reporting on true heroes. However, many who work in the media claim that news about their idols is what people want to watch and read about, and so that's what they give them. Celebrity sells. Dr. Stuart Fishoff of the American Psychological Association says it's normal for people to idolize those who have fame and fortune. We are sociologically pre-programmed to follow the leader, he says. However, if young people choose to idolize a celebrity who indulges in risky behavior, then they might be inspired to do the same. They may think that if they themselves act like their idol, they too will become famous. While many celebrities love that the media turns them into heroes, other celebrities criticize these false images. They don't want to be heroes. They don't want the pressure of being seen as role models for young fans. They know that their mistakes will be widely reported and will likely upset and disappoint those who idolize them. However, 
The price of fame is that young fans will continue to idolize celebrity superstars and consider them heroes. Convincing young people that celebrities do not make good role models or heroes will be difficult if there are no real heroes to replace the celebrities. So, the media and parents need to focus on real heroes. Many can be found in history. Examples include Martin Luther King Jr., Eleanor Roosevelt, Gandhi, and Abraham Lincoln. There are also many everyday men and women who have acted heroically by facing danger to help people. Even though they have flaws, as all humans do, their courage can inspire others. Such heroes will still be heroes, long after celebrities are no longer remembered. All right. So, um, I like this essay mainly because it does bring up some very valid points, right? Some celebrities that we mentioned, we may not hear about down in history, right? They may not have done enough of those good deeds, good actions for people to remember them. So when you guys are grown up and adults, the people that are young like you may not even know who you're talking about of those celebrities that you look up to or that you mentioned. So this person argues that the people in history that did these courageous acts should be what is considered the celebrities. So now we're going to listen to the other side. So this person that we're going to listen to actually believes celebrities should be considered her heroes. So this is our counterpoint or our rebuttal to the previous argument. Counterpoint. Celebrities can be cultural heroes. After the baseball game is over, young fans line up to get autographs from their favorite players. The player who hit the home run that won the game is greeted with cheers. One fan yells, you're my hero. Many actors, singers, and television stars are idolized with the same adoration that many fans show sports stars. They are all famous celebrities, but are they also heroes? Do they deserve or even want such admiration? Society is very quick to sneer at celebrities who are idolized and are very ready to say that any contribution a celebrity makes is minor. Many people are dismissive of celebrities just because they are celebrities. Yet there are many celebrities who are true heroes. These individuals may have struggled courageously to reach their goals and made outstanding achievements in their fields, sports, movies, music, fashion, that can inspire others. Striving to be the best one can be at a sport or in science, medicine, or another profession can require extraordinary skill, determination, self-sacrifice, and dedication. Celebrities who set good examples as role models for striving and achieving at the very highest levels in their chosen fields and beyond can at times be considered heroic in their struggle, commitment, and accomplishment. Dr. Eric Hollander at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City says, Celebrities can have a positive influence on our lives with positive messages. This is especially true when fans appreciate a celebrity's abilities and achievements. They may idolize a soccer player's genuine ability to play well and score points in nearly every game. This admiration may lead young fans to work harder when they play soccer because they want to be like their hero. In addition, some celebrities have made outstanding contributions to charitable causes. Paul Newman was called one of the best actors of his time, but he also founded a food company that donates all of its profits to charity. Other celebrities like Derek Jeter have attained greatness in their chosen fields and are also very active in charitable work. Jeter created an organization that helps kids turn away from drugs and alcohol. As a result, celebrities like Derek Jeter have a positive effect on people especially their young fans, who are inspired to live healthier lives. Helping people is definitely something that heroes do. Because many celebrities deserve admiration for their achievements in or beyond their chosen fields, it's really up to the fans to choose their heroes carefully. Fans need to know what qualities real heroes have and to look for these qualities in the celebrities they are attracted to. They need to ask themselves if they are worshipping celebrities just because these people are famous, or because they are true heroes. If fans confuse mere celebrities with real heroes, they rob themselves of good role models. If the only celebrities young people are exposed to do nothing but go to parties, wear expensive clothes, appear on television gossip programs, and act rudely, then that is who will be a major influence on young people. It's also up to the media to pay more attention to celebrities who are true role models. 
This is not always easy because these celebrities are not necessarily looking for the media to shine a spotlight on their actions. They are involved in helping refugees fighting for conservation or working to improve people's health because these issues are important to them. They aren't doing these things to increase their fame or to be admired as heroes. We all need heroes, people we can look up to and strive to imitate. If we are clear about the qualities we admire, we will be able to find many true role models among the diverse group of people we categorize simply as celebrities. But the individuals we choose to call our heroes can't just be any celebrities. They should be people who, by example or action, are trying to make a difference in other people's lives. So with this one, if you notice, they say, yes, celebrities can be heroes, but they also kind of support the first person's comments, right? Like there are celebrities out there that maybe shouldn't be idolized or looked at as heroes because they're not doing anything that's heroic. They're just out, you know, wearing expensive clothes, doing things that the media is like all over. But, you know, you have to think about both sides here because I believe both sides make a great point. If I were to support a side myself, personally, me, Ms. Palmer, I would say the second one is correct. I don't think that just because the people in history did all these great things that the people in modern times should not be looked at as heroes too. If you look at a lot of celebrities, they take the money that they're getting and a lot of them donate and they donate to things to help people. Um, you know, I'm big into sports. I watch my sports and recently in that NFL draft, one of the players from the 49ers, which meant I'm not a Niners fan, but, um, the kid that was picked up, he had his draft party, which is like this big party that, oh, they got picked up to be in the NFL and now they're going to be athletes and famous. He chose it to be at a homeless shelter where he threw this draft party for the kids in the homeless shelter. So I would say that's something that's heroic, right? He's doing something to give back because that's the shelter he came from as a kid. And so he wanted to not only provide these kids with food and fun, but he also wanted to show that example of like, I came from where you came from and look at me today. I made it, I did hard work, but I made it and you can do it too. So I don't think that it's fair to say because of all these great huge issues that were happening in the past, that today's future people that are doing heroic things shouldn't be recognized as well, right? We don't necessarily have a civil rights movement going on where somebody needs to go out there and, you know, make, uh, sit on a bus and not give up their seat and go to jail for it, right? But we do still have celebrities during these like Black Lives Matters protests that are out there right there with the people ready to go to jail if they have to to support the cause or to do something controversial that may get some negative attention, but they're trying to do it for the greater good. So if we were to say celebrities aren't heroes or people that you know are really highly in the public are not heroes, would basically be saying we're never going to have heroes again, right? So that's kind of why I like, I like both sides, but I support side number two. So let's go back to the Nearpod. So I want you guys to go ahead and do a poll based off of hearing that reading and your own thought process. What do you think? Can celebrities be considered heroes or are we just idolizing people too much? And it's okay to be on either side. Remember, this is not a you're right or you're wrong. This is your opinion. All right, so majority of you said yes. We did have a percentage that said no, which is, like I said, it's your opinion. So I'm gonna go in and start bringing in um, celebrities that have done some great things with society. So I'm just gonna start off with my favorite, which is Len Manuel. Um, so Lynn Manuel is the um, director and actor in Hamilton. 
He has uh, wrote all the music for Moana. He has a new movie coming out this summer called Into the Heights, which is based off of a Broadway that he won an award for one of his first ones. Lin-Manuel started as a teacher. Okay, so he was teaching. And then he really <clears throat> felt passionate about immigrants because Lin-Manuel, he's from Puerto Rico, he's, he's Puerto Rican. And um, he feels like it's not fair to say that immigrants can't come into this country and become great things. And so his stance is really just to promote immigrants, to promote the arts. And um, he did a lot to give back to the island of Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria devastated it. So we're gonna watch a little video clip on him. And one of the things that he did that was considered, um, people looked up to it. So let's see if it'll let me. Sometimes it blocks me, so hopefully. Fingers crossed. There we go. Well, now the man behind the hit musical Hamilton gave some local students quite a treat today. CBS 2's Christy Fajardo is live at Panorama High, where Lynn manuel Miranda visited. Hey, Christy. Hey, yeah, the big star was a big hit. About a thousand students were handpicked by several local high schools to come here. And Miranda told them that limitations can be strength and encouraged them to dig deep for their art. A standing ovation and tons of security at Panorama High. Only photographs were allowed as Hamilton creator Lynn manuel Miranda took questions from students. His immigrant background and the immigrants in his Broadway hit about our founding fathers were frequent themes among this overwhelmingly Latino crowd. That word has always only had positive connotations for me. I grew up in a very, uh, in a largely immigrant neighborhood in Upper Manhattan. I come from an immigrant family too, and that just lets me know that anything can be possible. The one-time teacher turned Broadway superstar was invited to speak by local Congressman Tony Cardenas. Students asked him about his inspirations, his career, but one subject that never came up was politics, although he was later asked by reporters. I'm not a politician. I write songs. If, you know, if you're a kid and you're scared in this country, there's a lot of adults who are working really hard and have your back. His Broadway mega hit has received critical acclaim, but also some criticism for its ethnically diverse casting of the white founding fathers. If you're looking at the people playing our founders and they they don't look like the people we've typically seen. They don't look like statues. They don't look like our money. Uh, suddenly they stop being these deified people. They become real. But it's precisely what some have blasted that students like Amanda Jimenez celebrate. You never really dreamed that someone so important would relate to you and you would relate with. Miranda says whenever his musical comes to a town like Los Angeles, he likes to partner up with local high schools. Why? Well, he used to be a teacher. And he says teenagers are so expressive, they make the best audiences. Uh, some of the students here are part of the Edu Hamilton program, and they'll get to see the musical for themselves this fall. Lucky kids. Back to you. All right. All right. So we could say he stepped out of the norm, right, because he created this musical Hamilton, which is about the white founding fathers, right? And he decided to tell the story, but all the characters were played by people of diverse backgrounds. So there was Hispanics, there were black, um, you know, there was all different colors. There was white still in there. So he decided to say, okay, forget the color of the skin of the founding fathers. Let's just tell the story and let's give people an opportunity to see that you know, all colors can come together and celebrate. So he got a lot of criticism for that, right? So we could say, well, he did something that was brave and courageous that he could have taken a lot of backlash for. And he said, that's okay. I want to do it. And I want to not only bring the arts out and show the arts, but I also want to show that diverse populations can deliver messages too. So some of the contributions that he has made he made a song that 100% of the profit went to help Puerto Rico rebuild after Hurricane Maria. So he brought a bunch of people that were from the island that are singers. So like Jennifer Love, he or not Jennifer Love, Hewitt, Jennifer Lopez, uh, Camila Cabela, um, Fat Joe, Mark Anthony, 
um, a lot of the Puerto Rican artists to sing this song about Puerto Rico, and then everybody that bought it on iTunes, all the money went to help rebuild Puerto Rico. Not a dime went to him. He also gives money to low-income schools performing arts programs, so he believes in saving the arts, and so he will donate money to schools that are in low-income areas to make sure they don't lose their art programs. And then he fights to help young immigrants, so he wants immigrants to see, hey, you're important, you matter, you have a voice, you should be able to contribute to society, you should not be looked down upon like you're nothing, you can be something. And then he also has raised um, $20 million and donated that to various different charities. So we're gonna do a jigsaw activity, and I'm gonna give you guys um, just a couple minutes, so about three minutes, look up something interesting about Lin-Manuel, whether it's charities or how he's given back to the community, and then place what you find on the collaboration board. So you, his name is right here up in the top, Lin-Manuel Miranda, and you can just type in charities or um, contribution to society or gives back. See what you come up with and throw it into the collaboration. So just take one more minute here, take a fact that you found, throw it into the, the board.
We're coming up with some good stuff. For the sake of time, I'm going to move on just because I have your exit ticket questions. So based off of what you've heard today and what you found, do you think he should be considered a hero? Yes or no? Okay, and our last question here, this is your <clears throat> exit ticket. So based on your answer on the poll, tell me your claim. Is Lynn manuel a hero or not? Why or why not? So you have to give a reason, so tell me your claim. So a good example of a sentence starter would be, Lynn manuel is not a hero because, and then you tell me the claim. Or he is a hero because, and tell me your claim. And this is getting you guys practice to write those thesis statements you'll be writing when you start your paper. So make sure to finish that, <clears throat> that claim. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close the meeting out just because we have one minute until class is over so you can finish it up and then make sure to take your break. Thank you.